Welcome to ATV News. I'm Corinne Smith. And I'm Blair Fairman. Today we'll get an insider's view on the national economic bailout and take a look at some renovation going on around campus. For those of you who have not yet registered to vote, it's not too late. I went to the courthouse to show you how. Living in a democracy means that we have the responsibility to vote who we believe will be the best at running our country. If you're looking to vote in this year's presidential elections and you haven't registered yet, it's not too late. Come on down to the Cash County Courthouse, located on the corner of 200 West and Main Street, fill out a registration form and you're good to go. You have until October 20th to do this. Don't let this year's presidential elections go by without your voice being heard. I'm Blair Fairman for ATV. Students walked around campus barefoot last week to bear it all as a way to raise awareness about poverty in Africa. Aggies for Africa asked students to donate their shoes and go barefoot instead. Lindsay Anderson has the story. Welcome to ATV News. I'm Rick King. And I'm Blair Fairman. It's Monday, November 3rd, which means Election Day 2008 is just around the corner. On today's show, we will cover early voting that has already been going on and take a look at one person's first time voting as an American citizen. Yeah, well, you do. True. Now that's all we have for the girls' life tips. And now that you're looking so good, you need to show it off. And what better way to show off your new look than at a party oh, with parties. all your friends? Yep. I know. In today's how-to, Britta Anderson is going to show us how to get your roommates to throw you a surprise party. Judy Surly and her husband Matt Danley opened a quaint natural market called Sweet Peas in March 2006, located in downtown Logan. People from all over the county have supported Sweet Peas for years, but like so many businesses, no matter what size, they have been affected by our dropping economy. For a while, Sweet Peas was the only store in town to carry all organic and natural foods. When I first moved here, um, there wasn't really any place for me to get my groceries, so I actually started this business in my basement and ran it at home for a while. We actually had good success for a while, um, until the economy started getting bad. We just run on such a tight budget, too, that we just can't take any slump in our sales at all. There's no cushion there. There's no buffer zone. I think people are not coming in as much. And then people that do come in still regularly, they're just not buying as much. When we lose 30% of our sales, that's our entire profit margin right there. Some businesses don't work out and some things are not under our control too. For some small businesses, closing is inevitable. Until our economy can get back on its feet, people will continue to buy what's cheap and what's easy leaving local businesses to suffer. We don't know how long our economy will be in a recession, but hopefully our new president will be able to get things rolling soon. For ATV News, I'm Blair Did Fairman. you know werewolves are responsible for 97% of undocumented, fabricated Halloween murders every year? Without the proper knowledge, training, and expertise, you stand a very real chance of falling victim to one of these fabricated attacks. And nothing will ruin your late night candy hunt like a werewolf attack. Todd Heaps and Scott Anderson, professional mythical creature hunter extraordinaires, are here to help in this week's How To. Hello and welcome to this edition of ATV News. I'm Blair Fairman. And I'm Kendra Morris. Today we'll bring you updates on the two suspended Greek chapters at USU and take a look at the two rallies in support of higher education. We'll also take a look at some students' artwork here on campus and reporter Brooke Ward will show us some of her favorite pieces of African Welcome to ATV Weather Aggies. I'm Blair Fairman and here we are looking down the road towards another spring break. It's March already and we should be feeling some small signs of spring. But guess what? There's no such luck. March in the mountains usually means unsettled weather, and that's just what we have. For Tuesday, we have what will probably be the warmest and best day of the week. The morning starts out cold with a morning low about 29 degrees, but it will warm up until the mid 40s throughout the day. Skies are partly cloudy and there's only a light chance for showers. The evenings will drop down below freezing and the chance for showers increases after sundown. On hey Wednesday, Aggies, welcome to ATV Sports. If you're like me, you miss football season the day it ends. To whet your appetite and to get you excited for next season, I have the 2009 football schedule, which was released last week. In Coach Gary Anderson's first year at USU, he will be returning to Rice Eccles Stadium to square off against his former team, the University of Utah. Two weeks later, for the home opener, 
Southern Utah comes to town, which is also a former team of Coach Anderson's. The biggest announcement that came with the releasing of the new schedule was a November 20th matchup against Boise State here at Romney Stadium. The game will be televised on ESPN. This will be the first game televised on ESPN for Utah State football since the Aggies played in the poinsettia Bowl in 1997. It's been a while, but I think we're ready for the challenge. So Blair, no sport. Is it starting to feel like summer yet for you? Are you serious? There is snow on the ground and it's freezing. It feels like we're all the way back in January again. Well, we're actually just two weeks away from summer break. And while a number of students are headed back home for the break, some students will be kicking it here in the 435. Exactly. And if you are one of the unfortunate, I mean fortunate ones, to be stuck here in Cache Valley and you haven't found a place to live yet, Maria Barca will highlight two places that you could call home for the summer. To read past refraction papers and see athletic stats, go to www.usustats.com forward slash refraction. Moving on, the Utah State track and field team competed at a UCLA Invitational Saturday with a record-setting performance by sophomore Sonia Grabowska. Grabowska cleared a school record 13 feet, 9 and 3 quarters inches in the pole vault. The mark is also a WAC record and is an NCAA regional qualifying mark. Congratulations, Sonia. The team will be in action once again on April 18th when they host the Mark Faldmo Invitational. We've had a great season of USU sports this year, and now let's take a look at some of the most memorable highlights.